Am ajuns la ziua a treia a naționalelor de șarc de la Sebeș, probabil cea mai intensă zi pentru că am avut parte de două runde. Peste 8 ore de șah de nivel înalt, dar până să analizăm partidele de top, să o consemnăm și debutul întrecerii de amatori, adică jucători de șah cu elo până la 2200 în acest caz. Avem peste 130 de participanți la această categorie la Sebeș și imagini minunate cu ei, așa cum ne dorim să tot vedem. Jucători de toate vârstele, față în față la aceeași masă și cu aceeași pasiune pentru șah. Jucători mai sobri sau mai joviali, clasici sau nonconformiști, dar cu toții foarte serioși în întrecerea lor. Ne întoarcem la competițiile principale și vorbim mai întâi de runda de dimineață, în general nu prea greată de către șehiști. Pe primele șase mese erau jucătorii din plutonul cu două puncte din primele două runde. David Gavrilescu a reușit să câștige cu negru, iar Justin Ciorgovan a jucat o partidă foarte bună și a reușit o mini-surpriză în vigâdul pe marele maestru Tiberiu Georgescu. Irina Buluma avea și-a continuat traseul perfect, dar cu emoții puternice, adversarul ei având avantaj decisiv de mai multe ori. La sfârșitul rundei, rămăseseră doar 3 jucători cu 3 din 3. La feminin, pe prima masă s-au înfruntat Miruna Lehaci cu Mihaela Sandu, singurele jucătoare cu 2 din 2. După un star care părea foarte agresiv, partida s-a liniștit. Deși Albu a păstrat un avantaj, acesta s-a dovedit mai mult simbolic, în final consemnându-se remiza. Pe masa a doua, Emma Obada a reușit o partidă foarte bună, învingând-o pe Marea Maestre Corina Peptan. Au câștigat de asemenea Raluca Zgârcea și Angela Dragomirescu. Astfel, după terminarea rundei, 5 jucători aveau două și jumătate din 3. După pauza de prânz, jucătorii s-au întors la mesele de joc pentru runda a patra. Pentru unii, simțul de conservare și-a spus cuvântul, așa că am asistat la câteva remize destul de rapide, inclusiv pe prima masă, unde se înfruntau David Gavrilescu și Irina Bulmaga. Alții au jucat și au reușit să intre în plutonul fruntaș cu 3,5 din 4. Kiril Shevchenko l-a învis pe performerul rundei de dimineață, Justin Ciorgovean, și a ajuns astfel la 3 victorii consecutive după remiza din start. După rândă, l-am prins la un scurt interviu. Suntem în runda a patra a campionatelor naționale de la Sebeș, o rundă dificilă, deoarece a fost și runda a treia de dimineață, runda a patra după amiază, s-a și văzut la joc, au fost niște partide, au mai apărut erorile. Dar am o partidă foarte frumoasă cu un invitat de marcă, favoritul numărul 1 din turneu, proaspăt naturalizat pe lista României, Kiril Shevchenko, 20 de ani, 2662. Kiril, welcome! Thank you, mulțumesc! <laughs> nice to have you here! And uh, please show us uh, your game. Ok, first of all, I didn't expect he is going to enter this Ragozin, never played it. I decided to enter some line with uh, Pawn Sacrifice. It's, it has very unclear reputation for white, but anyway, it has some interesting nuances. So B5, A4, C6, and here I knew that uh, Queen B1 is like one possible move, a6, e3, some Amidiaros games were, were played this way, knight d7, bishop e2, castle, castle, knight queen e7, and okay, white is, white have, white is having compensation, but nothing really special. So I decided to play queen c2 because it seemed to me very logical, I, because if I go queen b1, a6, e4 here, queen a5, And uh, if I protect with some way queen c2, let's say knight e4, and nothing works. So I decided, okay, queen c2 makes a lot of sense because I protect c3 and prepares e4. Uh, knight d7, e4. Here my expectations were on queen a5, knight d2, knight b6. And here I planned some kind of idea, bishop f6, gf, bishop e2. If he takes on a4, I play rook a3. It seems like I'm pawned down, but uh, I will take back on c4. So whatever he plays, like queen c7, knight c4, his pawn structure is completely damaged. I make a castle, then knight e3, e4, I have very nice compensation and I think more than that. Not so he played his king, who will remain shattered for all the game. Exactly, it's uh, unclear what, he, what he's gonna do next, because if he uh, tries to put king on c8, then he probably will meet some kind of e5 move. And then, um, okay, C8 is not shelter okay. anyway. 
Uh, so g5, bishop g3, a6 was played. Here I was struggling to find some move, but okay, I just uh, considered f first of all h4 is logical idea in this anti slav variations. g4, knight e5, but uh, here knight h5 is so strong. And if I try to keep this bishop, then he managed to even put g3 or, or even take on h4. So that's actually not a variation. Knight c6, queen b6, and that's what I was afraid of. Uh, I decided, okay, bishop e2, bishop b7 is fine. And here I was struggling for half an hour almost because uh, I couldn't find a good way. I saw h4, c5, d5, um, g4, knight e5, e d, e d. But knight d5, I didn't find enough compensation for me. Okay, computer says that knight g6 is possible, but it still doesn't give a lot of for white. So I, made, I played some kind of shit. I wanted to play, I really wanted to play knight d2, c5, e5, knight d5, knight e4, but here actually black can castle, and after knight d6, bishop c6, or even c takes d4, you can see that uh, black has very nice uh, piece coordination, because this king is, okay, it's, it's weak, but uh, queen a5 is on a day, and knight e4 is also coming, so it's very unclear who is better. And I'm still pawned down. So I decided to went for knight e5, c5, knight d7, knight d7, rook d1. But actually this position is not very pleasant for me. Uh, as, I, as I thought, because, because of move queen e7, d5, ed, ed, castle, castle. Here I thought f5 is so strong because he wants to uh, win my bishop and bishop f3 is, I guess it's bad, but I don't remember why. Queen f7, queen g7, I don't remember. Actually, the position I didn't like, but uh, I was sure he will enter this line, because after queen e7, I didn't see anything else. Like, I can try h4, cd, cd, and here, okay, this actually is a very complicated position. Maybe rook g8 is best, uh, but I would play g4 at some moment to sacrifice this pawn, and then go queen side, and this roller coaster with uh, both castling on different sides. But okay, he took on d4, queen, rook d4, queen f6. At first I thought it's some kind of shit, but actually then I started to think deeply and I understood that uh, it's not so simple for me. So I played bishop d6. I was surprised that my opponent didn't play e5. This is the critical moment. Uh, rook d1, rook d2 was two alternatives. So rook d1, queen f4. And the point is that if, if I want to sacrifice the pawn, he will just take and it's very good if I have draw here. So I'm forced to play f3, queen d3, knight c5 is a threat, knight d3, queen d2, queen d2, king d2. And this position is not really... As, as long as I thought about this position, I thought I'm better here, because uh, let's imagine black plays some kind of f6 move, king e3, and okay, I'm pawned down, but uh, I just want to grab on this b5 pawn, bishop b4, then threatening rook d6, he cannot make a castle, then h4 in some moment, so I'm better here, probably, at some moment. Maybe here castle makes more sense, king e3, but still uh, black is under pressure, and uh, okay, computer says f5, but f5 is unreal to play <laughs> and uh, to see from, from the fast. So that's maybe what my opponent was afraid about, but I, I'm not sure it's... The reason, because rook c8, it's easy to see that after take, take, and cut, queen b2. Uh, yeah, I play queen b2 because after castle, I, f, I was afraid about knight c5. But computer says it's f4 and it's killing. Okay, it didn't see f4 at all. Uh, so I just wanted to um, force, force him to play bishop c6 and castle. And it's easy to see that this position is collapsing for him because he has no moves with the king. Okay, if he transfers knight to somehow to b6 to a4, but it's not a really good square, I can play queen b4. And then f4 is on the way, rook d1, bishop g everything. e5, rook d2, h5, rook d1, rook h6, okay. And here it, it would be nice if he plays this. I wanted to sacrifice the bishop, then sacrifice rook and queen b7. There is no way to defend. So queen z8. Here I wanted to play king h1. <laughs> but uh, I thought, okay, queen h5, what if he plays rook h7? I didn't see rook d7 at all. So I just wanted to make a pass move. 
But instead of this, I... Okay, rook c7, queen c5, that's what I also didn't see. But I decided, okay, my worst piece here is probably queen, so I just will transfer it to some place. So g g2 and create rook h6 threat. Um, you thought that your worst piece was a queen on b4? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, the worst piece is of course bishop, but what, what can I do with it? Okay. So I went queen b2, f6, queen d2. The point was if he goes king f7, I just take here. Queen d5, rook e6, and I planned queen b7, because queen b5, king g6 wasn't so clear to me, but it's still winning. Okay, queen b7, I forced him to play rook e7, queen b5, rook e8, and we can stop analysis here because it's <laughs> completely... Yeah, is, uh, and after rook e7, I took on c6 and queen d5. Queen d5 threatening queen g8. Yes, queen g8 and... and uh, everything crumbles. Okay, the critical moment was... Really critical moment was if e5. he plays e5. e5. Yes. and enter this uh, endgame. Because if I don't play f3, queen d2, then I just don't have anything. Like, absolutely anything. No, two, two pawns After king d2, much. it's uh, a bit complicated, because, okay, for for him it's one option to take on a4, another option mm -hmm. is to take, make a castle, third option is f6, queen f7, so many different options, and uh, everywhere I have enough compensation, but I wasn't sure if it's a lot. So probably I made mistake somewhere earlier, but still not, not a very bad game as I thought before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, nice comeback. It was a little... <laughs> I'll be back yeah, in okay. <laughs> Schwarzenegger style. <laughs> After the first round, then suddenly you are on the first uh, board, most yeah, likely exactly. tomorrow. So it, uh, it's very nice also. However, it looks very nice from outside this game. I just want to say that this tournament is really on the high level compared to what I have seen. And uh, I'm very glad that Romanian chess is growing. Samuel Gimpu a reușit să treacă de Gabriel Voitanu, astfel că acum avem patru jucători cu 3,5 în fruntea clasamentului. La feminin nu s-a ținut cont de obosala rundei duble. Jucătoarele au fost foarte combative, unele poate chiar prea combative. Raluca Zgârcea împotriva Mirunei Lehaci a sacrificat un pion în deschidere, dar inițiativa s-a evaporat, pionul în minus rămânând. Ulterior, Miruna a forțat până când a ajuns să stea mai rău, dar partida s-a terminat până la urmă reviză. Pe masa a doua, Mihaela Sandu contra Angelei Dragomirescu a pierdut un pion, dar a pus ulterior o mulțime de probleme adversarei, reușind să întoarcă partida și chiar să câștige. Pe masa a treia, Emma Obad a jucat o partidă foarte bună împotriva Alesiei Ciolacu, dar o scăpare la mutarea 25 într-o poziție cu mare avantaj i-a permis o lovitură tactică frumoasă a Alesiei și partida s-a răsturnat, negrul a câștigat câteva mutări mai târziu. După patru runde, în clasament, lider solitar este în acest moment Mihaela Sandu cu 3,5 puncte, urmată de patru jucătoare cu 3 puncte. Întrecerea continuă miercuri cu runda a cincea, ocazie cu care vom reveni și noi cu un nou episod din Cronica Video pe paginile Federației Române de Șapte.